Hello, this is Trevor Lewis, and this is another video from the Voyager Middle School Steam Lab. Uh, this video is going to be using Scratch for coding, and I'm going to try and show you how to practice some conditionals, so go ahead and follow along with me and try and make this. Um, I'm going to actually give my students the starter that I'm about to show you, so they are going to have that file to start with, so this goes a little bit faster. We're focusing on conditionals, so not so much about how to do controls. There's, I have some other videos about how to do arrows. All right, so what I've got here, I've got my starting comment. The cat's going to move the colors around. When the colors touch, they should mix according to color rules. I've got a setup for my cat. And like I said, I've already shown you how to do the responsive controls like this that work well in the arcade. You can see I've set them up with up, up, left, right, and down. Um, so that uh, I have already clicked the green flag here, so hopefully I can just yeah move around with these arrow keys. And then I've got these colored dots. I've got a yellow, a cyan, and a magenta, and I've named them so that I can tell them apart. They are all the same sprite, but I just used different um, costumes for that sprite. And each one of these sprites also has other costumes. They have green, red, and blue costumes. Um, I didn't name them all, but that's okay I'll just make sure oh maybe I should rename baldy green so I can find it do that on those ones probably have to resave this for my students too so um, if you oh I'm switching them all to green I don't mean to do that well that's fine I think I have that coded so I'm going through and I'm changing these names so that the names make sense when I'm coding and I'm going to save and update the file that I've saved. Maybe. There it is, color mixing starter. That's the one you want to download. I'm going to replace it. You can load it if you've already downloaded it. Let's hit the green flag, get those colors back to where they're supposed to be. All right. So then what I did was I put the same comment in each one of these colored balls. I said each colored ball should be able to be held by the cat. If the colored ball touches each other, the color should mix. Cyan plus yellow equals green. Magenta plus yellow equals red. Cyan plus magenta equals blue. I could go on for a 40-minute video about the science of the colors here and um, the surprising fact that there is no such thing as magenta light, for example, and that your eye just gets really confused when it sees red and blue at the same time um, and why these are primary colors of pigment instead of the red blue and yellow that you're used to mixing um, from art class paints so but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm gonna try and eschew getting into all of the the color theory and the physics um, that I like to talk about and we're gonna focus on the coding the first thing I need to do is I need to make it so that the colored ball should be be able to held by the cat so what do I want to happen that sounds like something that only happens sometimes right I, if the cat is moving around I don't want the cat I don't want the ball to move around with the cat unless the cat is holding it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a comment here and if if that's something I want to happen only some of the time, what that should scream to me is that I need a conditional. And the first thing I do when I do a conditional is I write a comment and I write 1 2 3 and I make sure that I think about all three things and that I test them all separately. So the first thing I think about that I'm going to test is what is the action I want? Well, if the cat is holding the ball, what that really means is that the ball stays with the cat when it moves, right? That's an action I can test. Then I got to think, when is that going to be true and when is that going to be false? I got to think about the condition. So I want that to be true if the cat is touching the ball. And... I don't want it to I don't want the ball to move with the cat if the cat is not touching the ball because that doesn't make any sense because I'm thinking like the cat is gonna pick up this ball. Cat is not touching. So I'm gonna make sure that my condition is true then and false then before I put it into my conditional statement. And when I test that conditional statement, I want to do that and I gotta think, do I want it to to move with the the ball move with the cat? Do I want that to happen just one step or as many steps as it takes while the cat is has a hold of the ball. So maybe this is something that I want to happen over and over again. So I'm going to put this in a forever loop. So forever if that is true, right? So let's see what this does. 
let's go ahead and try and code this. And there's actually a bunch of different ways to do this. And I've thought of several, like you could have a, a key that you press to pick up the ball and maybe a key you press to drop it. I don't know. There's a lot of ways to do this, but let's, I'm going to try and do it the most simple way that I can think of. First thing I'm going to want is a when the green flag is clicked. I always want that. I have said that I'm going to want a forever loop. I'm going to grab an if then. I'm just grabbing all these things out, but I do need to test this action first. Ball stays with the cat. So I have to think about that. Uh, whether something is touching or not, that's probably under sensing. Touching, touching. Oh yeah, touching mouse pointer. It doesn't say cat there, but if I if you if I click this down, you can see I've got different things here. Sprite one. Oh, that's the cat. Okay, so then I can grab this one out. That's probably what I want. Touching sprite one. If I click it right now, it says false. Well, I'm what am I coding again? Okay, I'm coding the yellow ball. Oh, it's this one selected here. It is false. If I move the cat so it's touching, and now I click it, it says true. So false, true, and you can even test it like if I touch one whisker, oh, it's not quite touching that whisker. False, false, false. True, 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 true. Even though it barely is touching, it's still true. So it works. So this is working. I kind of did it out of order. How do I get the ball to stay with the cat? Let's go to motion because I'm going to need to move the ball because the cat's moving all around. I can move the ball a certain direction. I can turn. I can go to a random position. That doesn't really help me. Go to a certain position glide which means it takes an amount of time and my code doesn't run until that glide number of seconds is done to a random position point towards something okay there's lots of options here but i think i kind of glossed over this one go, whenever you see a drop down you, i always wonder what's under the drop down so i could go to sprite one so if it says ball stays with the cat well that moves the ball to the cat and if the cat moves that's not happening over and over again but if I click it again, it goes back with the cat. And if I put that in the forever loop and I hit go on that, maybe it looks like the cat is carrying the ball around. So that's my action. My condition I already tested. So I'm going to put my condition inside there. And I'll put it in the forever loop. And it looks like it's working. But the question is, will it work when the cat is not touching the ball? And so I hit the green flag. And if I've done my condition right, it should stay put until my cat touches it and then my cat can move it around. So that code is working. I can keep this, this comment with it. I can maybe add another comment to explain what this is doing. Um, but one thing that I'm gonna realize here is that each colored ball should be able to be held by the cat means that I need the same code in both of these sprites. So if I drop it on cyan, and I drag and I drop it on magenta, what you'd find is when you go in there, you're gonna have exactly the same code. Oops, maybe not. Let's see. Let's hit this one so I can see the whole thing. Oh, there it is. It just ended up in the in a weird spot. Oh, look, I have this one twice. Well, that's interesting. This is the wrong code. Helps if you put comments. Um, this button right here lets you see all of your code. So if there's something hiding off to the side like that, oh, that means I have to resave that again. Oh no. Oh well. All right. So now let's hit the green flag and see what happens. Well, I can grab this ball. And then I can grab that ball, and then I can grab that ball. Well, that's not exactly what I want to happen. But let's see if I can make this so the colors will mix. Now, if you look, the cat has got the ball sort of on top of its face. So here's a little trick that you can do to make it look like the cat is not, like, on top of the ball. You can go into costumes here, and you can move your cat. So if you move your cat over, where it's trying to get, is right to the center. And you can even put a little dot out there just to make sure that you've got something going on. Uh, um, let's go one. Put a little dot. There we go. Little dot. Can't even see it, but it's there. So if my cat costume looks like that, you can see at least it's a little bit further away from the face of the cat. So I might be able to do something like touch the ball to the ball without touching it with the cat. Oops, I touched it with my tail when I turned around. That's one of the disadvantages. So I might have to think about that. Like maybe I'd have to think about changing this condition so that if I'm touching Sprite 1 and I'm not touching yellow and I'm not touching magenta. But let's try and make these so that they color mix. I'm only gonna do one and then I'll leave the rest for you as an example. So 
I'm going to make it so that when cyan touches magenta, that these colors mix. So what is that going to mean? Well, in the cyan one, we want cyan plus magenta to equal blue. So cyan plus magenta, this is the, we're coding the cyan ball right here. So I'm going to say, I've already got my costume setting to cyan at the beginning. So what I'm going to do is I could write out that same sort of code, but I'm going to go faster this time. If touching, which they are right now, if touching, which one? The magenta sprite, which is true. That's what I want. If doing that, I want it to look like the colors are mixing, which means I want cyan to turn blue. So I'm going to go to looks here. And because I have a different costume, I'm going to say switch costume to blue. And I'm going to put that in there and I can click it and see it turned blue. Now I could have it switch back when I untouch it. So maybe that would be an if then else. So let's go if touching magenta switch to blue. And otherwise, let's duplicate this, and I'm going to get rid of the go to because I don't want it to move. Let's switch it back to cyan. This is something I want to be checking over and over and over again, so I'm going to throw that in a forever loop. You could put that on this in the same forever loop, um, but then you're checking sequentially, and I kind of like checking in parallel better. So now, oh, now they're both touching, so let's hit the green flag. Okay, let's see. Touch, 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 touch. And if I really wanted to look like they're mixing, I need something like this also in magenta, right? I need when the green flag is clicked, forever loop. I know I'm going fast here. You can back it up. You can pause it. You can try out some of this code. I would also be writing comments. Coding can be a long process. So this is magenta, and it's when magenta touches cyan, I get blue. This is where this is really helpful to have this. Uh, here you go, cyan plus magenta equals blue. I have to look at that over and over again because as I'm coding, I kind of lose track of where I am, and I want to make sure that I'm not doing the wrong color mixing. So now let's let's look at this. See, you mix them, they turn blue. You unmix them, they don't. That's kind of cool, right? So I'm going to need to do a lot more coding to get the yellow ball involved, but these two colors now mix correctly. Okay? Um, that's pretty much it. See if you can make this game and make it work. Um, at least make one of these work. Um, I'm going to do a real quick adjustment here to make it so that I don't accidentally hold two balls at the same time. I'm just going to do it with just the cyan and the magenta. So. This is, like, see, this is where comments in your code would have helped. So, like, this should say setup. And then this should say something like mix with cyan so that I can remember what this code is for when I'm moving around and I'm trying to get going and I make mistakes and I know how to fix them. So this one should say something like, um, let cat hold the ball. And then I might come in here and I might actually add an addendum and I say only hold one ball. So you maybe you have to hit the green flag to choose another ball. So I'm going to leave it like that. And so right now it says, if touching sprite one, then go to sprite one. So this is holding the ball. This is the condition. So only holding one ball might say, I would go into operators here and you have these and, uh, where'd they go? And, or, or not. So what I can say is, yes, you have to be touching sprite one and you're not touching another ball. So, and you are not touching and then you go to sensing and grab another one of these touching ones and you're not touching uh, the cyan ball and now you and you might say and not touching the yellow ball right you might do both of those right I can I can just stack up these ands and I would test these one little things at a time instead of trying to do it all at once like I am make sure everything is working because this gets complicated really fast 
So let me test this condition just like I used to do before. So like, am I touching Sprite 1? I absolutely am. But am I, and I'm not touching the yellow ball, and I'm not touching the cyan ball? That is true right now, okay? But if I move this so that it's here, and then I move this so that it's here, you can see, oops, I moved too many things. You can see that I am touching two things. So what if I'm touching two things, right? What, ha what happens here? This should say false, and it does. So that means I can't pick it up. So that'll make it so that I can't pick up the magenta one unless I don't already have a ball. Ooh, super long and ugly. But luckily, it's fairly similar to the other ones. But let's try it. So let's see. I can't pick up the magenta one if I'm holding another ball. So I got the blue ball. Let's go touch it, and they'll mix. And you'll notice, ooh, that's kind of interesting. I kind of pick it up only but with my tail, and then I end up dropping it as I move away. A little bit weird. A little bit weird, but it kind of works. This is why iteration's important, because this game is not working out quite how I meant, and I might have to do some things and iterate a little, around a little bit more to make it work better. But you can see it's a color mixing game. That's the point.